Hello animators. So today we'll make a cute smiling little green one-eyed monster. Not from Monsters Inc. The character from Monsters Inc. has horns. This one does not have horns. So it's a whole different character. <laughs> but you guys can put horns on it if you like. So Disney, please do not sue me. Alright, so let's get started. So here I have Adobe Animate. And I'm greeting with this splash page right here. I want to look at these later, so I'm not going to click on that box. I'm just going to click on skip right here. There we go. And then I get this other window here, and I just want to start a new project. So I'm going to click on create new. And then I'll get another page here. Here are my presets. And they just have different uh, height width ratios for my animation, for my video. Uh, this standard default one right here, 1280 by 720, that's okay. If I want to make something for social media, I can go over, to, over here to social, select something for Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, but this is fine. Um, I don't really care what resolution anyone uses. As long as the frame rate is 30 frames per second, 30 right here, and the action script or the platform type is action script 3.0. So leave everything there as is. That's fine with me. I'm going to click on create, and now I'll be able to start creating. All right, here we go. Loading, loading. All right, so here I have my stage in the center. That's what this big white box is. So this is what the uh, viewer will see, and everything else outside of it is behind the scenes. It's kind of big right now. I don't need it this huge, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. So right here, this is 100%. I'm going to click in there and type in 80 to zoom out. There we go. 80 is fine. You can do 50. And if for some reason it's off center like this, it's off, off the center, go ahead and click this icon right here that looks like target sites. Like crosshairs, click on that, and it'll center your stage right there. Boom, back inside the scene panel right here. That's what this big box in the center is called. All right, so I want to make uh, an eye. Let's start out with the iris. So an iris, that's a circular shape, right? So I'm going to go over here to the tools panel on the left side. If your setup does not look like mine, go ahead and click on this icon up here on the top right for your workspaces and select Classic. So if it's your first time using Adobe Animate, you probably have Essentials Workspace Activator like this. And it has your tools on the right, timeline at the bottom. That's cool. But um, a lot of the other Adobe software has the tools on the left. And I want to make the transfer of those skills uh, easily accessible, smooth as possible over to Adobe Animate. So I like to click here and select Classic. Also, the Classic layout is how Flash was, the original, um, the previous software before it was called Adobe Animate. It was called Adobe Flash. And I learned this software when it was Adobe Flash. Thanks to my, uh, my teacher, my professor, Michelle Sandoval. All right, so now I'm going to get started here. I want an oval. Uh, this is the shape tool right here, but right now it's a rectangle. I want to use an oval. I don't see any ovals here. So right here where I have this rectangle, it might be a, um, a hexagon or an oval already, but if it's not an oval, just hold down the left mouse button on it. Do a long press. There we go. And now I have the oval tool right there available to me. Boom, oval tool. See, now it's an oval. That's what I wanted. Now I'm going to go here to the right side of the Properties panel, and there's four tabs up here. And right now it's Tools tab, that's, which is what I want, so I can change the properties of my tool here, format it further. Uh, if that's not available, maybe you have Dock here available. And you can actually change the color here of your stage, of your background. See? I'm going to leave it white as is. And I can go back and change the height width ratio there if I wanted to. Let me go here to Tools. Tools is what I want. And I'm going to activate the scene color here, the um, Object Drawing Mode. I'm going to click on there one time so it turns gray. Or you want me to click away from it. So the background there should be gray. That blue box, just ignore that because every time you click, you're going to get that blue border around it. There's another one down here. It's the same button. I click it again. It's going to turn it back off. So if it's dark, it's off. If it has a lighter color, and then it's activated. And this is so when I draw a shape, it doesn't clip off. So we'll get into that in a bit. You'll see the differences there of it clipping off and on. All right, I want to make an iris. And so I'm going to choose the colors here for my iris. So the fill, which is the inside of the circle color, I'm going to make it blue. I'm going to go with blue eyes on this one. Let's go with this dark blue here. And then the stroke, that'll be the outline, the outline of it, the border around it. I'm going to go with black. And you want to go with red, whatever you guys want, whatever you feel comfortable with. There we go. And the stroke size, that's the thickness of the border around it on the outside. Uh, one is okay with me, but you want a nice thick border around it, you can increase it. So you can hold down the left mouse button on there and drag. Or you can type in a number in there. I mean, just type in two in there. There we go. But one or two, that's fine. Now I'm going to try to draw a circle over here. So I have the oval tool selected. I have drawing mode activated. I'll do drawing mode. I have the fill color there for blue and the stroke, which is the border. The outline of it is black. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button somewhere here on my stage and drag. 
and you might end up getting an oval like this, but I want a perfect circle. I haven't let go of the mouse, so I'm still holding it. If you want to get a perfect circle, hold on shift. I still haven't let go of the mouse, still holding on shift, and just make an eyeball shape, something like that, and then let go of the mouse, let go of shift. There we go. And um, I want it right in the center. Right now it's on the center, so I'm going to center it. I'm going to go over here and go to the selection tool, tools panel, click on the first one here. You can also hit the V on your keyboard, it tells you there. If you hover over a tool, you get a little pop up window. And it'll give you the key there that's a shortcut on your keyboard so i'm gonna click there there we go i'm gonna click on my circle here one time notice i have a blue boundary box around it that's because uh, i made it using the object drawing mode all right so i want to center it on the stage there's a couple ways to do that i'm going to show you the long way right now first and then later we'll go over the faster way so i got it selected now i'm going to go over here there's a little bar here a little sliver right here between properties and the timeline panel here i'm going to click on this one right here transform that's not the one I want. I want this one here, the bar. So I want a line. There we go. There's a line. And I want to line this to the center. So I'm going to uh, make sure this is activated here. You want to check mark in there. So click on the box to let the line to stage. That way it will align this to the stage. So I'm going to put the circle here in the center. I'll align it horizontally center. There we go. It's horizontally center. But I also want it vertically center. So I'm going to click on this one here. There we go. So these two center ones here. And with that activated. If I click on this other one over here, it's going to center it somewhere else. See, centered it in the bottom. I don't want it there right in the center of everything no matter what the size of your stage is that's going to center it right there cool all right so i got my eyeball there in the center and the reason i want it there in the center is because when i bring in the other shapes i want to be able to center them there as well all right so now i'm going to make a pupil so uh, pupils are black right so i'm going to make this black so i still have the oval tool here activated so i'm going to click it again to select it there we go fill circle here the fill for my color here is going to be black black outline that's fine and I still have object drawing mode on. If I click it again, it's going to turn it off, so be careful with that. Let me click it again a second time. There we go. Make sure it's on. want the lighter color around it. All right. And I'm going to try to draw a circle in here. Hold down the shift key and drag. And there we go. It's a little bit off, so you don't want it to be off. So I'm going to adjust it here. So I'm going to go to Selection Tool. Click it. And now I'm going to right-click it this time. And then go to Align here. And then I can click on it right here. Horizontal Center right click it again align and vertical center there we go so that was faster than going way up there right another thing you could do is uh, you can familiarize yourself with these shortcuts right there control alternate 2 and control alternate 5. honestly i think um i will have trouble remembering those i have all these other shortcuts i have to remember for other software so i just like to right click it and choose those uh, options there but remembering those will make you a, a faster um, artist faster animator all right, so now I, uh, I want a little reflection there. I want a little glare. I want a little something shiny in there. I'll let you know it's a nice shiny eye. So now I want to make a white circle in the right oval. So I'm going to go here, oval tool again. And then for fill this time, I'm going to make it white. There we go. And the stroke, I'm going to leave it at black. Uh, but I made the stroke size too earlier. I'm going to bring it down to one. There we go. Oh, that's too far. That's point 0.1. That's a tenth of one. So I'm going to one enter. There we go. I'm going to make an oval around here somewhere. Something like that. And this I'm not hitting shift because I hold on shift. I'm going to get a perfect circle. And I don't want that. I want an oval like that. That's cool. And it's a little too high. I want part of it to be inside the pupil. So I'm going to go to selection tool. Now I'm going to click it one time. There we go. And I can try moving it with the mouse. But I'm going to use the keys on my, uh, the arrow keys on my keyboard. And I can move it that way as well. Down, down, left, left. Up, right. There we go. Let me click out of there. That's cool. I like that a little better there. I can also zoom into it. See, this is a magnifying glass right here. Magnifying glass right here. Zoom tool. Click on it. And then click here. Boom. Boom. There we go. Get an eye in your eye. Eye in your face. And then I can zoom out by holding on control and click. Oh, sorry. Not control. Click. Alternate. And click with that tool on. There we go. Now it's a little bit off. So center stage. I saw that tool active. I don't want to accidentally click it. Then have that happen. So I'm going to go over here to selection tool. There we go. Center stage. There we go. All right. So I got my eye here set up already. I got my uh, my eyeball. Well, not the whole eyeball. I got the uh, the iris, the pupil, and a little reflection there. Now I want to make the um, the white of the eye, the white of the eye here. So I'm going to oval tool again and fill white. All right, cool. Stroke white, and um, I'm going to make a uh, the actual eyeball here. So I'm going to start around here somewhere. Hold on the shift key, hold on the left mouse button, and drag across. There we go. And then I'm going to center that as well. So I'm going to click on the selection tool right here. Click on the, on the eyeball there. Right click. Align. Horizontal center. 
right click again align vertical center there you go all right so right now it's actually in front of everything else i covered it up so i want to put it behind it so i'm going to right click it go here to arrange and send to backs go all the way behind it there we go cool so that's what i wanted and so you can see this a lot better let's go ahead and change the color of the stage so i just clicked on the stage i have the selection so activated and here i have the properties for my document i'm gonna click on stage right here and i can choose a color for my stage see a lighter blue color there we go that looks cuter you know that's not necessary but that'll help you see the white there better it gives it more of a pop and you know, it'll help some of the other colors pop up as well all right so here i have my eye and um, i'm going to have this in an eye layer this is going to be it's going to be in its own layer so i'm going to go up here to the timeline panel this whole big giant bar up here that's my timeline timeline pattern panel and this side on the left that's for managing my layers right now this is uh, layer one there are other layers that i can add but they're not there i've got to add them so first what i want to do is so i'm going to lock this one up right here i can click on this lock and it'll lock all my layers or i can hover inside of this layer below the lock and it gives me a lock icon there and i can click it there if this disappears if you get that uh oh you close the eyeball right here that's the nsa spying on you just kidding it's too high to your layer there you go and let's make it visible all right just a lock there this way i don't go back in there and accidentally mess up what i have here that uh, does not lock your background your stage because the stage it's its own thing over here see i can still change the color of the stage that's just for the um the eyeball here with the um, with the pupil the iris that's what that's for all right i'm going to add another layer i'm going to click on the uh, uh, square right here with the plus sign inside of it there we go i added another layer and now i can't see my other layer <laughs> it's hidden what happened all right well i kind of tucked it down in here so i got to make this panel wider so i'm going to hover my mouse around this dividing edge right here you can actually do this with all your panels so you can make them wider or thinner and i'm going to do the same thing with uh, my timeline panel here i'm going to go over here between the scene panel and the timeline panel Hover your mouse until you get a double side arrow. Hold down the left mouse button and drag. There we go. Cool. All right. So I want to name my layer. So layer one, I'm going to double click in there. And I'm going to name it Eyeball. Eyeball. Well, I'm not a baller, but I try. And then just enter or click somewhere else. There we go. And if you try to put a space in there, it doesn't allow for spaces. You can use an underscore, but no spaces or dashes. It doesn't let you name them that like that. And this other layer, the one on top, that's going to be my eyelid, my eyelid. Also the body of my little character here. So I'm going to double click layer two right there. And type in eyelid. There we go. And then enter. Cool. All right. I haven't done anything else over here with the frames. Not yet. I want to get this set up first. So leave everything there as is. All right. So I got this layer selected. And I know because there's a blue highlight. And the other one has that lock there. So I don't accidentally mess up the, the eyeball over here. All right, so now I want to make the eyelid slash body of my uh, one one eye uh, green monster here. So I'm going to go back to oval tool again, round body. You want to give it a square body, you can do that too. You can go over with the rectangle tool and give it a square body. And I'm going to go here to fill. The inside of it, I want it to be green, green uh, green body there. And then the stroke, the outline of, outline of it is going to be black. I can give it a thicker stroke. I can do that as well. You can even change the style of the stroke. You have it dotted, it look kind of funny. Uh, you go over here to width, and these will actually look a little neater. These will actually make it look like it was drawn with the, with the pen or something like that. And you know what? I think I'll change the, the stroke size here. Let me go with uh, let me go with four enter, and then later I'll play around with the width. All right, so I'm going to make a big giant oval to cover this up, and uh, it's going to be a lot bigger because it's not going to be the size of the eyeball. It's going to be bigger than that. So I'm going to start about here, drag across, and make it oval shape something like that cool and we go here to selection tool click on it one time right click and i'm going to center align with almost center right click it again align and vertical center there we go and then the other eyeball behind it's directly behind it i can verify i can check see if it's there by having that oval selected here's the color of that green i can change the trim uh, transpass the transparency of it transparency or opacity or alpha whatever you want to call it See, it's 100%. I can bring it down and I can see through it. So, you know, let me try 50. You can see it's right behind it there. Let me go back up to 100. There we go. Uh, width right here is for the style of the outline around it. You can try playing around with that, give it more like of a drawn effect. You can do it with one of those uh, big giant ink pens. And you know, I'm not liking any of these styles. But if you guys like them, you go ahead and go, go with them. So, I'm going to go back over here with the regular width one there. All right. So there's my body 
Somebody. Somebody. I shouldn't be singing on YouTube because then uh, they'll shut down my channel. They'll, they'll get rid of my video. All right, so I'm going to make the actual eyelid here where the eye opens. So I'm going to go to Oval Tool. And I'm going to go with Fill the inside of it. No color. I'm going to click right here and Fill Color. Fill Collins. And no color is this one right here. I want to slash through it. Boom. Then the stroke, which is the outline of the border of it, I'm going to make it red. If you look at your eyes at the, um, at the outline of it, of the, the eyelid, the edge of the eyelid, a pinkish color. Yeah, you can go with pink too. I'm going to go with red. I'm going to go with the flesh, fleshy color. I'm going to make an oval here, centerish somewhat. Bring it around, something like that. There we go. It's a little bit off again. So selection tool. Click on it one time, then right click it. And align vertical center. Right click again. Align vertical. Did I go vertical center here? Yep. And so I got a horizontal center. Oops, wrong one. So a horizontal center this time. There we go. And um, I'm at a mouth down there, so I can try pulling it up higher. I can leave like that. So you want to leave some space down there for a mouth. So that gives me enough space for a mouth there. All right. So currently I've been making these shapes with the um, drawing object mode. I can't select tool right now to show you, so I go to your oval tool. With this activated right there. So I want to convert these over so that I can um, do other detail stuff with them. Because if I go to selection, the selection tool, if I click on these objects, selects the whole thing. See, I select the whole green object, select the whole uh, red object there. Let's say I wanted to select um, just the outline here or the fill. I can't do that right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to convert them over so that the, as if they were made without the drawing object mode. So I'm going to hit Control A to select all. There we go. And I select everything in this layer, not the eyeball layer. That one's locked, so I don't got to worry about that. I'm good. And then I'm going to hit Control B, and it'll convert it over into shapes. Control B. There we go. Now I converted them over to drawing shapes, and I got a little mesh pattern there. So now I can click inside here, Selection Tool, Selection Tool. Click here in the center. Oh, click it again. Let me click out of there. Now I'll click in the center. There we go. See, so I have only this part here in the center selected instead of the whole green circle or the red circle there. And now I can delete that. Delete key on my keyboard. Boom. I just opened up the eye there. There we go. And it looks like my eyeball, the white on the eye looks needs to be bigger. Uh, but instead, also what I can do, I can change the size of uh, this right here. So I'm going to go over here, free transform tool and change the, the red. I got the free transform tool activated. Click on the red circle there. There we go. And now I'm going to bring this in something like that. Boom, and make it a little wider, open up the eyes some more. And there we go. And so now we have these gaps where you have these cuts. That's, uh, that's from clipping because we, we are no longer using drawing objects. These are um, regular shape objects. These are not drawing mode objects. So I wanna fill this in. I wanna make those green. I gotta fill that in. That's on the layer and below. That's what that, I'm seeing through there. So over here on the properties one, I'm gonna click on that paint bucket one time. There we go. And I want this green. So it's already selected for me here. But if for some reason you don't have this green selected, click in there. And then come over here and see if you have a, your mouse is now a little pipette, a sampler, eyedropper, whatever you want to call that. And wherever you hover over, it will give you that color. Even the stage right here or the, the panels here, it will give you those great colors. So you can see it right here. You can see the color changes, the colors uh, changing. So I'm going to select this green there. There we go. So now my bucket right here, it's going to make that color. I'm going to drop it in there. Bam. Drop it in there. Bam. There we go. I'm going to back over to uh, Selection Tool here. And I got some extra green here I don't want. Click on there. Delete it. And click in there. Delete it. There we go. If you delete too much, if you delete something like that, Control z undo. There you go. There we go. So now I got a small eyeball. If you do want to keep your eyeball uh, bigger, then you'd have to um, unlock the eyeball layer. And then you can make the um, the wider of the eyeball uh, bigger as well. But I'm going to go with that. Maybe I'll make the whole thing a little bit smaller. Let's see. Free Transform Tool. There we go. I'm going to bring it down a bit too. Oh, not like that. Double click and bring it down some. Actually, I'll just leave it right there. All right, now I want to get rid of the stuff on the outside. Click it there. See, I only got that with the mesh pattern. That's what selected like delete. There we go. Cool. There's my little uh, green eye there. Still enough room for a mouth at the bottom. All right. So now to make the mouth. So if you think of a mouth, it's a crescent or half of a circle, right? So oval tool is still active. And mouth for fill, the inside of your mouth. I'm going to make the inside of my mouth black. Now you can make it red, whatever. It's your mouth. And then stroke, it'll be the board outside. It could be black, red, pink. I'm going to leave it as red right there. And I'm going to make an oval somewhere over here out to the side or down here. Uh, as long as your stage is different colors, should work. If your stage is still white, you're going to want to go over here to dock. 
change the color of it. But um, I'm, I'm not going to make the oval here. And also, I'm going to turn this off right here. So this is the drawing object mode. So it's still active where you have the, bit, the blue boundary box around your object. So if I make a circle right now, I go to Selection Tool. It selects the whole thing. I want to be able to select individual parts of it because I'm going to bring in a square on top to uh, cut off the mouth. So let me show an example right now of what I'm going to do. There we go, something like that. And then I want to select this part here at the bottom to make a mouth. So I can convert it, but I don't need the, um, those object modes, the drawing object modes anymore. So I'm just going to turn this off right here. There we go. And I'll make an oval down here. Let's see, you got, it's got to be wide enough to fit in here, not too wide. Wide enough to fit inside that mouth, fit inside the green part and not too tall. There we go. So there we go. It's going to be uh, my mouth. And I got a clip off the top there. So I'm going to go over here to free transform tool. Sorry, the shape tool. I'm going to select rectangle tool and make a big rectangle on top of that. Hold down the left mouse button and drag across. There we go. And that's going to be my mouth down there. So I'm going to go over here to selection tool. And I can select the, the inside of the black square up top and delete it. Delete key on keyboard. Select this segment there, delete. And I can select this in segments as well. I can select the inside or the outside. And I want the outside there selected. Delete. Drag select as well. Delete. Delete, select that, delete. This one, I can't do that. So he selects the whole thing. I'd have to convert it using Control B, but we're getting rid of that. All right, so I'm gonna double click this now, bring it in over here somewhere, and I can still use a free transform tool if I wanna make it a little bigger. Uh, by using the free transform tool, you wanna hover your mouse over one of the handles here. Should have mentioned that earlier with the eyeball over these uh, handles here, these little black squares. Look at the shape of your mouse cursor. It changes shapes. So if it goes up and down, that means you can pull it up and down. If it goes left and right, it means you can pull it left and right. If um, you get the angle one, you can do the angle one. And if you get the loop, you can rotate it. Undo. If you get two arrows going left and right, you can skew it. Her, her, her. Let me leave that alone. Control Z. There we go. And I want to make a little tooth there. Uh, you can use a rectangle tool to make a, a little white square tooth or yellow tooth. Or if you want to make a rectangular tooth, sorry, triangular tooth, little pointy sharp tooth, you can click in there and go over to the polysar tool right here. This will allow you to make um, shapes with uh, more than four sides or less than four sides. Polysar tool. There we go. The number of sides five. So that's a, that's a pentagon. Let me change it down to three so I can get a triangle. There you go. Three sides in a triangle. This other stuff I'm going to leave alone as is. And I want the tooth to be white. So fill. I'm going to go with white. Stroke. I don't need a stroke on it because it's going to have a black border around it. And I don't need that. So I'm going to go right here with no no uh, no stroke and i'm just gonna make a triangle here somewhere i'm gonna hold on the left mouse button and drag there you go something like that and then i'm gonna go here to free transform tool if you have the white background here the white stage it's gonna be hard to see that because it's gonna be white on white free transform tool and i'm gonna click on my triangle here and i'm gonna try to make it a little thinner there we go now i want to try to drag it in here but if i try it right now i'm actually grab this right here the pivot point and it's gonna pull that out instead and i don't want to do that so to reduce my likelihood of error, I'm going to go over here to Selection Tool, and I don't have to worry about the little dot. I can bring in that tool, that tooth in there. There we go. Free Transform Tool. Let me see if I can make it smaller. Using the ones on the side, bring that up. And put a tooth in there. Just one little tooth. And let's say I want to make it yellow. I'm just going to give them a yellow tooth there. This guy's not eating too healthy. There we go. A lot of sugary products. Let me click out of there. Cool. This guy's a nice little yellow tooth there. And for some reason... Uh, monsters have been um, stereotyped to have yellow teeth, right? It's poor monsters. I'm sure not all monsters have yellow teeth. All right, so I'm going to select this whole thing here. I'm going to bring it inside the mouth right there. See? Boom. And then I can use the arrow keys. And notice I've been, like, deselected yet. Because once I deselect, and then I try to move something, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a hole. It's going to clip it out. So you want to keep that mesh pattern there while you work on it. Let me undo again. And so as long as you have the mesh pattern on your icon, on your object, it'll let you know that it's selected. I'll put the mouth in there somewhere. There we go. And um, I'm not going to have to animate the mouth. I'm just going to animate the eye movements. So I'll leave the mouth as is right there, just smiling the whole time. Nice, happy alien or green monster. Uh, you can try giving it horns if you, if you want to do something like that. Not like that, but um, you notice how we made that triangle. You can make green triangles as well and give it some horns. Give it a goatee or whatever you guys want. It's your creation. So now I'm going to start animating. I want this eye to start blinking. So I'm going to go to the timeline panel. And for the eyeball layer, which is the, uh, the part back here with the eyeball 
and the enemy hide this layer there. There we go, that part right there. I just clicked on this uh, dot below the eyeball there for the eyelid layer, and I hit the eyelid. So that's going to stay there static. The only thing that's going to be moving here is going to be the red. So I'm going to go over here to frame 50. So it's 30 frames per second. It's going to be just under two second animation. I'm going to right click right here on frame 50 for the eyeball layer. And I'm going to insert a keyframe. I can insert a regular frame as well, but keyframe as a beginner, just as a best practice. There we go. So it actually copied that uh, eyeball all the way over to frame 50. And um, there's a little gap in here between those two, uh, between this frame and the one before it. And I said, you know, there's another key event over here. So I can start doing something else with that eyeball, but I'm going to leave it there as is. And everything else disappeared. It's still there. It's just not at frame 50. I have to go back over here to frame one. I'm just holding down the left mouse button on this blue bar right here, the play ahead. Go into frame one, and there it is. There it is. And I'm going to start animating this. I'm going to go over to frame 10 for the eyelid layer. So not the eyeball layer. That's I don't want to do anything else with that. I'm done with that eyeball layer after doing that. But for the eyelid layer, which is the green body here, the eyelid, I'm going to right-click on frame 10 right there and insert a keyframe for a new key event. So at frame one, my eye is open there. Then at frame 10, it's going to be half, half open. It's going to start to close. So I'm going to go over here to free transform tool. Everything is selected right now. I'm going to click out of there and click on this red ring around there on the eye. There we go. If you only select half of it for some reason, just double click the red part there and it should select the whole red circle there, the whole red ring. I'm going to go over here in the center bars right here, hover my mouse over them. Not the ones on the sides, but the ones right here in the center, the top or bottom ones in the center until your mouse becomes a, a double sided arrow. You can even zoom in if you like. Let me zoom in right here. I can use a magnifier. Right? I can click in here 100%. There we go. Let's go with 120. There we go. And I'm going to pull these in together. I'm going to hold on the left mouse button and drag inward. So halfway, it's not going to completely close the eyes. It's going to start to close there. Something like that. There we go. Let me click out of there. Cool. So now I got to fill this in. So like earlier with the paint bucket, green paint bucket here. And right now the color is yellow, which I don't want. I don't want to make this yellow there. I don't want that. I want that to be green. So I'm going to click inside here. And I can sample the same green color there. So I have all these greens. I don't remember which green I used. I know it's this one, but... Sometimes, I don't know, I'll get confused. So I'm gonna click right here after um, clicked on the uh, fill color there. Hover a mouse over the green part and I can sample that same green. There we go. So now my paint bucket will make that green. So I'm gonna click there and click in there and I filled in that gap. There we go. So now the key event here, the key moment, it's that the eye is halfway closed. So at frame one, I'm open. So from frame one all the way to frame nine, actually it's open. Then frame 10, it starts to close. And I'm gonna bring this over a little further where it's still closed for a little longer. So I'm gonna go over to frame 20, right click in there, insert keyframe. So you notice it, there's nothing else there now, because it hasn't copied that selection tool here, because it hasn't brought that over yet, right? I went to 50 over there, I wanna go to frame 20, there it is, nothing there. So I'm gonna right click on frame 20, insert keyframe, and whatever at frame 10, it's gonna copy it all, all the way over to frame 20. Right click, insert keyframe. There we go. So the eye being halfway closed, it copied over to that, copy that over to frame 20 right there. So frame one and nine, still open, then starts to close there. And then at frame 20, I'm just going to completely close it. So right here, make sure your playhead is on frame 20. You can even click on that frame itself, selects everything that's in that frame. And uh, I'm going to close it all the way. Well, it's not going to close all the way, but close it as much as possible using the free transform tool. So free transform tool. Click out of there. So the free transform tool is to do transformations such as the ones we are doing now. Click on the red ring there. See, only got half of it, so double click it. There we go. And we try to close it all the way. Oh, something like that. There we go. It's not going to be completely close, but as long as it's as close as, pos as possible. I'm going to go over here to the paint bucket. Paint bucket tool. And let's go tool. There we go. Showing me object, I selected object. So you think it's red, but if I click there, it's going to change the color of that. So I'm going to go to tool and see what color that tool is right there. Cool. So it's green, so I can click in there and click in there. There we go. Selection tool. Let me click out of there. There we go. There we go. So from frame one to nine, eye is open. Then frame 10, it starts to close all the way to frame uh, 19. And then at 20, it's, it's closed right there. So 10 to 19, halfway closed. And then 20 is closed. And then we're going to have that go all the way over here to 30. I can try animating the open eye. Or I can do this. I can just copy this frame over here as well. So it's halfway open. Actually, I want it still closed. So I'm going to go over here to frame 30. I'm going to right click, enter keyframe, and it copies that frame over. See? 
there we go but actually that's not what i wanted to do let me undo that undo i wanted this frame frame 10 i want that at frame 30 the one that's halfway open so it'll start to open up again so i'm going to right click it there copy frames copy frames right there just copy frame 10 and i'm going to right click on 30 there and paste frames paste frames there we go so let me go back cool so the eye is still closed from 20 to 22 29 there from 20 to 29 eyes closed and at 30 i copy this one over it starts to open and i'm going to copy the first frame here over at 40 so the first frame where the eyes open i'm going to copy it at 40 and so at 40 it'll start to uh it'll be open again so i'm going to right click that one copy frames right click 40 paste frames and then the stuff that's going to fill in the gap here with uh, whatever i have at 30 which is halfway open paste frames there we go see there we go and then it's going to finish off like that here at 50 with the eyes to open so right click at 50 there paste frames again i still have the copy of the open eye paste frames there we go all right so i'm hit the play button here there we go and don't worry about the that mesh stuff that's just there because um, i have it selected on those different frames so let me go ahead and pause it pause it there we go if you want to get a preview of this hit control enter and you'll see what uh what it looks like control enter and that's what um your video will look like your animation there you go quick little blink there all right so you get this little preview window here so let me close this window now i adobe anime I haven't saved it yet so be careful with that so i'm just going to close it right here i'm going to save this as a project file so i'm going to go to file save as there we go and i'm going to name this uh green green blinker green blinker guy green blinker monster there we go so is it blinking or is it winking i don't know you have one eye can you blink or is it always a wink i uh, put on the desktop that's fine you can start a project folder as well let me go ahead right here inside this project folder there you go i'll save inside this project folder fla format that's what you want because that's a that's an adobe enemy file you can open this up and you go back to work wherever you left off continue working on it so make sure it's fla not this one or you're not xfl you want fla save and there we go save it in that project folder that i have and now I want my video file. I want an animation so I can share with people. I can uh, post it on social media. I can put it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Twitter. All right, so I'm going over here to export. And I'm going to export video media. Make sure it's video media, not movie, not image, not animated GIF, but video media right here. Export video media. There we go. And it's going to have the same name as the file that I just saved it as. File save as. Unless I go click in here and change it. And it's going to save it in the same place. So it's going to go to desktop here. I can also click on this folder and choose a different place to save it. All right. So do not activate that. Leave that as is. This is the resolution for your say, uh, for your stage. Leave that alone. That's fine. That's fine. And this I do want to activate. Start Adobe Media Encoder Render Queue immediately. So it'll start processing right away to make it a video. And then for format, you want to go with H.264. So click in there. And make sure you have h.264 so you get a, an mp4 file if you go with mpeg it's not going to be an mp4 it's something else it's like gfx or something so you want to go with the h.264 and for presets default is fine just go with default there uh these higher quality ones are completely unnecessary it's just an animation it's not real life footage you don't need all that so default there is fine and then you're going to click on export and then you're going to wait a while you have to wait for this other application to pop up the um the media encoder, video media encoder, Adobe media encoder. <laughs> so that's this long name. So wait for that to pop up and then you can uh, start checking out your video. So let's wait a moment here. All right, so here it is. It seems like it took almost a full minute for it to load, but it popped up and then this little progress bar popped up. Unfortunately, I started recording um, as soon as it popped up. Once it had played and started recording, um, it rendered out my animation. So there it is, it's done. I got the done, I got the check mark letting me know it's good. And it's on my desktop, so let's pull it up. So there we go, man. Cute little monster winking at everyone. And there we go. It's quick animation. This is a second long. So thank you for watching. I have an offer. You can support the channel by liking, subscribing, sharing, anything else. Take care. Bye.